Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post closing ceremony. My name is Michael Kelly, and joining us this evening from the Royal Australian Navy is able seaman Philip Armstrong. We warmly welcome the family of Private Brian Alexander Evelyn Haley, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who have served, those who are still serving, and the families who support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the pool of collection by members of the Haley family, visitors, including Susan Chuck, who's the mother of Private Benjamin Chuck, who was killed in Afghanistan in the Black Hawk crash, and the war with members of the War Widows Guild. Could I ask you now to please stand and join in singing the national anthem? The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations over more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the pool of reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Private Brian Alexander Evelyn Haley. Brian Haley was born on the 4th of August, 1914, in Sydney, to the large family of Evelyn and Gladys Haley. He attended Wimbledon Public School, All Saints College in Bathurst, and Geelong College. When he finished school, he returned to work on the family farm in Fitzgerald's Valley, New South Wales. Haley was a keen cricketer and used to drive the local team to matches at Carcor, Hobby's Yards, and George's Plains in a truck. On the 17th of February, 1941, Haley enlisted in the 2nd Australian Imperial Force at Royal Park, Victoria, joining the 2nd 21st Battalion. After training in Bonagilla near Wodonga on the New South Wales Victorian border, the battalion was moved to Darwin, arriving there in early April. Its nine month stay was not a happy one, and the primitive amenities, isolation, and mundane garrison duties lowered morale. Operational training continued, but was impeded by a shortage of equipment, supplies, and ammunition, as well as the demands of other duties. On the 8th of December, news of long expected Japanese attacks arrived, and five days later, the battalion was on its way to Ambon to join Gulf Force. Gulf Force wasn't adequately prepared for the Japanese invasion. After three battalions of Japanese infantry and a battalion of Marines landed on the night of the 30th of January, 1942, Dutch forces surrendered within 24 hours. Despite instances of brave, determined resistance, the tw second 21st could not hold back the Japanese. On the 2nd of February, Bravo and Charlie companies were massacred around the Lahar airfield. The remainder of the battalion surrendered on the 3rd of February and were imprisoned at their former barracks near Ambon town. Conditions for the prisoners on Ambon were harsh and they suffered the highest death rate of any Australian prisoners of war. Japanese treatment worsened after a successful escape was made by a small party of Australians in March 1942 and command of the, of the camp was taken over by the Japanese Marines in mid 1942. The rate of illness and death among the Australians on Ambon progressively rose, and from late 1944, the Japanese interpreter in controlling the camp introduced a crippling work regime known as the Long Carry. Emaciated prisoners were forced to carry heavy bags of cement and bombs between villages along precipitous jungle, jungle paths all, it seemed, to no purpose. With food being reduced to starvation levels, the death toll soared. It was one of the highest death tolls that Australians experienced in captivity. Among the dead was Private Brian Haley, who reportedly died of beriberi on the 1st of July, 1945. He was 31 years old. Today, he is remains lie at Ambon War Cemetery. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in World War II. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Brian Alexander Evelyn Haley, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Could I ask you to please stand for the reading of the ode in the last post? They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over, but in Australia they'll be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we thank you very much for your attendance today at the Australian War Memorial and wish you a safe journey home. Have a great evening, thank you. <laughs>